Welcome to my UDK video tutorial. My name is David David Skaggs, and I am currently a student at the Guildhall at SMU. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about matinee inside UDK and about the, the different animations you can do. We're going to touch on a couple of basic animations with some ships flying by, and then we're going to go ahead and dig a little bit deeper into the curves editor inside matinee to create um, a little bit more dynamic animation. We're going to have a ship uh, fly around uh, the outside here. Uh, we're going to have some particles attached to it. Hopefully it'll have some nice curves. It'll come back around and it'll shoot some missiles at us. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at what it looks like right now. I've already built it so it's complete. Just have to play it. Alright. See the ship fly by. Got a shadow of another ship. It's kind of cool. Come outside here. Now we've got another helicopter. And it comes in. It's got some waves, some particle effects. I don't know if you can see the dust beating off the buildings. But that's pretty cool. And it comes around. Wait for it. There it is. And it shoots some missiles. And of course we're going to dodge those. And then it flies away. Pretty cool. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into a new level. We're just going to open up the example map.udk. It comes with uh, the download of UDK. And it's actually got some cool features already in it. But we're not going to worry about those right now. We're just going to go ahead and create the flybys in this basic tutorial. And then in the next video, uh, we'll go ahead and do the helicopter coming in and then shooting the missiles. First thing we're going to do is we're going to hold Alt down, we're going to select the vehicle, uh, and then we're going to drag out. And that's going to create a copy of this uh, helicopter-like vehicle that we want. Let's go ahead and minimize, get out of full screen view so we can see the orthographic views. And the easiest way for me to work in UDK is I like getting down here and using the uh, tutorial. I like using the uh, perspective view so that I can see exactly what's going to go on in my level, how the player would see it. And then I work in the orthographic views to create the precision movements that I need. Okay, so we're just getting that to look just right in the window. And we're going to rotate it so it's flying the other direction. Okay, let's turn it around. Let's move it back so it doesn't crash into these buildings. Bring it up. There we go. That's perfect. And we'll bring it back. So it's now off screen, and we're ready to animate our first keyframe. Now, in order to get into uh, Matinee and start animating, we have to go through a editor uh, the editing program uh, of Unreal Kismet. It's up here. It's represented by the K. It's by the binoculars and the content browsers. Go ahead and click it. Let's see. Oh, we got it minimized down here. Cool. Okay. You know, and the first thing you're going to notice is they've got all these complex graphs and charts, and we're not even going to worry about that. That's stuff that's already built into the level. Uh, we're just looking for a, a nice atmosphere to build our stuff in. So we're just going to move that aside, right click, and add new matinee. Double click on matinee and that'll open up the matinee editor. Inside the matinee editor we have a couple of things that I'd like you to look at. First of all, we have two windows. We've got the curve editor up top, we've got the tracks window below. The tracks window represents it's kind of like a video editing software. It's very familiar. You add a lot of tracks and you can go ahead and edit them there. The curves editor functions exactly like an animation editor from Maya to Max. Um, there's, it works differently. There's a, it's, it's a little clunkier, but it's, it's very powerful. Uh, for for a, a game engine to have an, an animation editor that's powerful, it's, uh, it's really impressive. And once you get used to it, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, let's go ahead and point out a few things that we're going to need to know to uh, start working with the editor. Uh, down here, let's see. Some reason. There we go. Got that little carrot down at the bottom of the screen. That represent that represents our playback time. 
Over here we've got a red one, and that represents our total time. We can move those back and forth. Uh, you can also uh, use your middle mouse to scroll in and out. So if you want to look at every five seconds, or every, every second, you can determine how you want to view the editor. Down here in the bottom left, it's showing where our current frame is and the total number of frames inside our animation. Now you can go ahead and left click anywhere inside our uh, our timeline here and you can see that the current frame comes pops up and you can move that slider back and forth and that's where you currently um, are in the editor. Okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select our ship because we wanna key we wanna start keyframing our ship and start moving it across and we actually only need two keyframes. We just need a start location and an end location. So let's make sure it's selected, and it is. We can see down here in the bottom right orthographic view that it's selected. And we're going to go ahead and hit... Oh, hold on. <laughs> Before we do that, we need to add the object to the matinee editor. So we're going to right-click, and we're going to add new group. I'm going to go ahead and name it ship. And then we're going to right-click on that, and we're going to add a track. Now, there's lots of different tracks here, uh, everything from toggle to movement. If you were to select toggle, you can toggle lights on and off. Uh, the movement track is, of course, uh, for animation and movement. So we're going to select that. Um, I, I like to go ahead and turn this on right away. It's just There's a little box to the right of movement. If you click on that, you can see that ship movement pops up here, and it has uh, a red, green, and a blue box. Now those represents those represent your movement curves, and you can see the, the yellow line appears here. Um, we don't have anything. We do have a keyframe, don't we? Let's see. Okay, there we go. I, I went ahead and up here in the top left, I went ahead and selected keyframe. Uh, be sure to only hit it once. I I believe uh, Unreal and UDK have a tendency to double keyframe on top of each other. Um, not usually a problem, you'll notice it, you'll be able to fix it, but just be aware of that. And so now that we've got that animated there, or we've got it keyframed there essentially on, on frame zero, we can go ahead and move the time slider over to where we want our second keyframe, which, just go ahead and move it all the way to the end. And let's key it again. It's in the same place, but that's it's not important. It just means that it's standing still. And in order to uh, get it to, in order to get the ship to move, we're going to need to go ahead and move that last keyframe across the board, which will drag and drop in the orthograph orthographic view to the other side of the map, down here in the bottom right. Uh, now here's something important that I, I want to bring up. We've got this yellow line. It's called a trajectory line. It's not always on, but uh, it usually starts up for me. We've got uh, Show 3D Trajectory. If it's not clicked, you can just right-click on Movement, click it. It's it's really great. It's one thing I wish actual... Uh, it's the one thing that UDK has that I really wish uh, Maya and some other editors had as well. It allows you to see these little dots, which the closer they're together, the slower the object's moving, the further they're apart, the faster the object's moving, and it allows you to see um, how nice your arcs and your curves are, uh, which when you're animating complex objects is, is really, really helpful. Um.